right, so what is up everybody? Welcome back and Mod 11 is here, the hype is here, and I wanted to do something completely different in this video. So as we all know, Mod 11 introduced us to the weapon enhancements update of <laughs> Mod 11, and quite a few of the weapon enhancements had buffs applied to them so that they would be on par, if not better than the Dread and the Vorpal in some cases, you know, giving players a more diverse way of building their characters. So what I wanted to do was to test all of the updated enhancements and uh, see where they rank from 1 to 5 on how well they work for the support control wizard uh, Depending on whichever support build that you're running at the time because there's multiple ways to build a support wizard There's not one dedicated build that you have to have Okay, there's not one that you really have to have it, it you know, you can build your wizard however you want to build your wizard so what I wanted to accomplish with the Holy Avenger was to see what it would take for a support wizard to use this enhancement on a reliable build that would still uh, buff your teammates but also providing more heals than normally if I was using a different enhancement. And since all of the weapon enhancements that got buffs scale with your power now, uh, that actually leaves the door open for more theory crafting, which is something that I really like to do. And I wanted to test this enhancement because there's been times where, you know, there aren't any D seeds available to run with. And the only other option some people have is to do all DPS in one tank or all DPS in a Devotion Pally or just, you know, straight all DPS. And we already know how that goes. And I wanted to develop a build where, you know, if there was a shortage on D seeds, you know, you could call in a support control wizard that would give you the buffs that you needed, give you the heals that you needed and would be, you know, viable throughout any dungeon that you're in whether it be ETOS, Castle Never, FBI, Spell Plague so I ran the Holy Avenger in ETOS, Castle Never and FBI because I found that those dungeons are a good foundation to test anything on really and if we take a look at the new tooltip which states uh, you deal an additional 54% weapon damage as radiant damage with your powers you also have a 20% chance on each swing to improve your allies damage resistance by 20% while healing them for 15 seconds. Any blow that you land during this time will do an additional 18% weapon damage as radiant damage and this can only happen once every 45 seconds. So looking back at the tooltip, while I'm healing my allies for 15 seconds, the amount that I heal them for is scaled based on my weapon. It was kind of unclear to me if it was based off a of weapon damage or power. Uh, but either way, with a 45 second cooldown, the only way that I found so far, okay, now the only way that I found so far to continuously keep my allies healed is by waiting for the Holy Avenger to proc first, then during that 45 second cooldown, I can activate my daily power and heal my allies again with Song of Life, which is an active bonus on the Liland. And that can only happen once every 30 seconds. So with these two together, there's only a 15 second difference and um, during this 15 second difference, most of the time I have been able to proc Chaotic Growth, which of course heals you and your allies for 250% of weapon damage every half second for 10 seconds. So with the Liland and the Holy Avenger together minus Chaotic Growth, I think I'm in a good position to also use the Stalwart Golden Lion to not only add to the Radiant Damage my allies and I deal, but also to intercept 10% of that incoming damage. Now, I'm not 100% sure yet if I want to continue using this companion for this type of build. Uh, there's still lots of questions that need answers, but if I were to change this companion, it would have been swapped out for the Rust Monster so that I could debuff the enemies a little bit more. But um, back to the Holy Avenger. I noticed that during an FBI run when proccing Chaotic Growth first, that the amount that I heal for in 15 seconds according to the Holy Avengers tooltip is actually increased because of Chaotic Growth proccing first. And then looking back at the numbers, I'd say there's about a two to 4,000 difference in the amount uh, healed having Chaotic Growth proc first versing, versus uh, proccing the Holy Avenger first. And that's kind of interesting to me because if I'm able to proc Chaotic Growth first, whether the Holy Avenger is on cooldown or not, 
the base heals that I'll be getting off is going to be increased because of the Holy Avenger. And I believe that the Holy Avenger has a base of like 1200 that you can heal for per strike. I could be wrong. It's hard to get something like that on console without a program, but the base heals that the Holy Avenger you know gives you is increased when chaotic growth is procced first now this isn't really my go-to weapon enchantment this is just something that i wanted to test and see how well it plays in end game content as a support wizard with more healing um more healing buffs over actual stat increases from boons so you know how does it perform as a support wizard Honestly, it's not bad at all. It doesn't provide any actual debuffs like how the Plague Fire does. But in terms of healing and keeping a steady momentum with the Lilin and the Holy Avenger, it's a really good enchantment. It is a really good enchantment. I just wouldn't use it continuously in dungeons. I, I would only use this if there's no other DCs available in your group or if you're running heroic encounters and there's no DCs anywhere at all. And you're just lacking on the heels. That's probably about the only time that I would ever use this. But besides that reason, I don't see this enchantment, um, this enhancement being used a lot as a support wizard. Some of you might agree. Some of you might disagree. And if you disagree, let me know why you do, okay? Um, there's maybe one or two viable ways of building a full heels control wizard. And I'm going to put that in quotes, full heels. <laughs> I just I just wouldn't recommend going this path. There's there's lots of special items that you will need to increase the potency of your heals and shit. And if that's something that any of you would be interested in building, feel free to let me know down below because that's currently what I'm running right now. That's that's currently the setup that I have right now. But um other than that, with the Holy Avenger, I'm gonna have to give it a a uh, 2 out of 5 because using it as a support wizard really only has one benefit and that one benefit requires you to have a load of other things to work hand in hand with the Avenger and the additional 18% weapon damage as radiant damage I would have hoped that would change to a healing buff rather than a damage buff so that support classes would have a more reliable healing weapon enhancement rather than just having a 20% chance on every swing to buff um, to buff your to buff and heal your allies. It's it's not terrible. It's decent, but uh, that's pretty much it. So let me know what you guys think about the Holy Avenger on the Control Wizard. More specifically, the support. I would only use this for a certain type of build. I would not, no, fuck no, I would not use this going into FBI as a single tank and a three DPS. That's, that's just nonsense and a waste of time. Unless, unless your tank is Shepard from TLO and you got some good deeps. But um, other than that, let me know what you guys think down below. I will be testing other enhancements on the wizard as a support and DPS. And you guys already know, my name's Nova, and I'm out.